Now that you've downloaded the data, I'll show you how to read and parse the files in Python. So you'll end up with something like this, and then you'll take the first six columns, which are the accelerometer and gyroscope data, and parse them out into their own lists so that that way you can plot it in the next step. I think I want to expose you to yet another IDE here. So from Anaconda Navigator, let's go ahead and launch the Jupyter Notebook which is an IDE that's often used uh, analogously to the way that a scientist would use a scientific lab notebook. When it launches, you should see a view like this inside your browser. Um, this folder is displaying a view that's inside your user folder. So on Windows, that would be C drive, users, and then your username. Um, if you want to, you can create a folder for saving these projects in, or you could just create one in the root for your user folder. Um, but either way, go to new and then Python 3 notebook. Let's name this right away by clicking up here. Let's call it step counter. And you'll see how this works as we go along, but briefly the Python statements you type in these boxes that say in, and then you can run the in boxes in whatever order you want, and each one will produce a corresponding output, which is displayed permanently in a page that you can scroll up and down. So without further ado, let's create an empty list called lines. Then we'll open the file and we'll have the file path here and we'll have a file name as well and we'll create those in a second. And we're gonna open it as reader and then we'll say lines, oops, equals reader.readlines. This is where you'll need to remember the path to your data. Um, on mine, it was D drive, Java workspaces, Python, data. On PCs, your, your path folder names are separated by backslashes. On Macs, they're separated by forward slashes. But I think that that's going to work on the PC also, so let's give it a try. Um, I'm going to define the path as a string, which will be the D drive with a forward slash, and then the rest of my path string. And you go to enter your own and I'll end with a trailing slash so that that way I can specify my file name here. Um, so I'll have name equal, let's use the file 4-100-step-running.csv. And then uh, with this inbox selected, you can click run um, and you see nothing display because it's run without error. Um, in order to see something, you would need to, for example, print lines, which I'll do in a second input box. And now you can see this is uh, the list of the individual line strings that we've read from the file. Let's actually take a look at the first five. So rather than typing a new command down here, I'm just going to modify the thing I'm displaying. So I'm going to use a slice where I'm going to display just the first uh, five lines. So we see uh, we got one line that's the header line that tells us what the uh, different columns are named, and then we have some data that starts out with all zeros, but then we start recording sensor data there in the next line. So what I want to do is I want to split out each of the columns. So I want the accelerometer X to be its own list and accelerometer Y to be its own list. So uh, list comprehensions are a great way to do this. So I'm going to call it uh, accelerate, accelerometer X and I'm going to build one where I'm going to say for line, or I'm gonna return line element zero for line in lines, but I'm gonna skip the header line. So I wanna start with index one and go all the way to the end. Okay, so this is not quite what I want yet, um, but I wanna show you what this looks like. So I'll run this and then we'll take a look and see what it looks like. Oops. Okay, so here I've got, uh, I'm noticing that each of these are individual numbers and a dash, and so clearly that's not what I want. And the reason why is because I need to split this line by commas. So I'm gonna say uh, line zero dot split on a comma. Um, oh, sorry, split the line on a comma and then get the resulting element zero, which, would, which should be the string that leads up to the first comma. Um, let's just take a look at what that looks like. So I'll run that and then uh, I've got it. So notice I have to rerun each of these one at a time. So I ran this one. Now I want to rerun this one. Great. And that looks more like the data that I want. Um, however, 
you'll, you can tell by the quotes that these are strings and I want them to be float. So I'm going to cast this whole thing to float. And now let's run it one more time. Great. And now I can see a, a list of floats. So we can apply this same technique for all of the other columns. All right, and there we have it. So now let's uh, plot the data. So I'm going to remove the print statement for this box and instead have a new input where I'll say import matplotlib pi plot as plt. Um, and then I'm going to have a special command here that controls how the, the plots display in the Jupyter Notebook. And I'll tell you what it means in a minute, but let's go ahead and run that. Great. Um, and so now let's make a basic plot. So I'll say plt.plot um, and let's plot the accelerometer x data and I'll plot it as blue dashes and then plot.show and we'll run it and you see that's what it looks like. So what this uh, thing starting with the percent sign did was it made this sort of rescalable zoomable data. So I can grab this little tab in the corner and rescale it. <clears throat> um, this zooms, so if I want to zoom in just here so that I can see what's happening more clearly, uh, I can. Let's zoom again. <clears throat> I can uh, save it, I can pan back and forth in the data, uh, and then I can go to home which unzooms. So this is a sort of a helpful way to explore what your data looks like uh, if your step counting is going wrong and you want to analyze why. If you don't want to zoom and you only want to plot some of your data, of course you could use a slice. So we could start at index 400 and go up to index 600 for example. Run it again and you see uh, just zoomed part of the data. Although the difference is we didn't zoom here. We have started index 0 in the x-axis as uh, what used to be index 400 there. Okay, come back next time for um, a simple but ineffective step counting, which will improve in a minute. Um, but I just want to have some answer for where the steps are so that I can show you how you can plot small red circles where your algorithm thinks. So you've downloaded the data, you've parsed the data, we've plotted some of the data. Um, now let's get an initial answer to where we think steps are, are occurring. So if you look at uh, this slice from 400 to 600, um, it looks possible that the steps are happening at each of these peaks in the accelerometer data. So let's write a quick method that will show us where the peaks are. Um, and instead of just counting, I actually want to return the indices where the peaks are occurring um, because that's going to let us later on plot points there. So I'm going to define uh, get peaks and I'm going to pass a list called data um, so that, that way I can get the peaks for for different lists like if I want accelerometer X versus Y versus something else. Um, so now I'll say I'll, I'll loop over them all for I in range and I want to start at index 1 and go up to the length of the data minus 1. Um, so I'm not going to visit the last element and I'm not going to visit the first elements. And the reason why is because what it means to be a peak is for data i to be larger than data i minus 1. So I'm larger than my left hand neighbor and data i is larger than data i plus 1. So I'm larger than my two neighbors on either side. So if that's, uh, okay, so I need a list of peaks. So here I'll say, uh, x peaks, let's call it peaks x maybe, is an empty list. So now I can say peaks x dot append i. So now I've recorded the index where I saw the peak. And at the end I can return peaks x. So let's evaluate that. Great. And now I'll say peaks x equals get peaks and I'll pass it uh, the accelerometer x data um, and because here I'm viewing a slice between what was it 400 and 600 I'm gonna pass it the same slice from 400 to 600 let's run that okay great um, so now if I wanted to I could add 
those to the plot. So let's do plot, or let's do plt dot adding another plot. And I'm going to add uh, peaks x. And then let's add a list consisting of zero times whatever the length of peaks x is. Um, so if you don't know what this is doing, this should create a list full of zeros whose length is exactly that. Um, and those are going to be my y values. So the plot is just going to appear down here on the x-axis. Um, and I'm going to, wait, do I have my parentheses messed up here? Okay. And then I'm going to display it as red dots. Um, and then I've got to do plt.show again. So when I run this, Oh, zero is here. Okay, so we've added a red dot at all of the indices where we think we detected a step. Um, this is not terribly useful, however, because it would be nice to put the dots actually on the peaks themselves. So what that means is that at each of these indices, we need to get the Y value from our original data at that index. So let's go ahead and add that. One thing that you could do would be to add your own for loop here. Um, well, we don't even need a for loop. We could just use a comprehension. So we could say peaks y equals, and let's, uh, our original data here was our accelerometer x data from 400 to 600. So we're getting that slice. <clears throat> um, and now we have the slice. I want to access a particular index for each index in the peaks x data. So that what I'm doing here is I'm looping over each of these indices and then I'm using it to access um, the actual Y value from my original data here. Um, so now that I'm doing that, I don't need, well, let's evaluate that. So now I don't need these artificial Y values anymore. Now I can say peaks Y and I can run it again. Um, and that's pretty good. You'll notice here that our plot is still displaying the original peak values that we calculated because we didn't reset it. So if you want to, uh, you can go back up here. This is rerunning it. I'm going to expand it. And now I'm going to go here and rerun the full list of things. Great. So now we see where our peaks are located. Um, and that's great, except that this is a little bit awkward. So I want to refactor it so our get peaks returns both the x and the y. So let's take our peaks y list comprehension um, and let's put it here. Whoops. Wah, and let's put it here at the end, right before we return it. So now instead of instead of this, a slice of the x acceleration data, um, what we really want to use is data, which was our input list that contains the data that we're trying to find peaks in. Um, and now that looks a lot cleaner. Um, and now I can return peaks x and peaks y. Uh, one after the other. And so now I can have peaks x, peaks y, like that. And so now everything's like a little bit cleaner and nicer. Uh, and the, but the output should be the same. All right, so this is pretty decent, um, except some of this data you can tell, uh, even though there's a peak, it's probably not actually a step. Like I'm guessing this little guy right here, I'm guessing I didn't take two rapid steps one after the other here and here. Um, so you might want to play around and run this code on different input data sets because we started with that one where I'm running, um, but I have a whole bunch of other ones where I'm sort of more wandering than running. And in the next step, we'll think about how to improve this code.